Rob Mob, Eduardo Talbert here. In today's video, we're going to make this dude here. This guy is seven feet tall, ultra light, as you saw, and super easy to make. Let's get to it. Let's get started with this super cool project. So the first step is just the planning, right? So that uh, what I want to avoid is something that doesn't look like a human. So I went to humanproportions.com. There'll be a graph here somewhere on the screen, but I went there and I input seven feet. And when you input seven feet, it tells you the length of the arms, the length of the neck, the width of the shoulders and the things that you need to make your uh, Reaper look, you know, kind of human-like. Now you can adjust those as needed. If you want something to look really like bulky and huge, like a Skeletor, then you can make it a little thicker. And if you want it all uh, like slanky and thin and creepy, like me, uh, then you adjust those accordingly. So for seven feet, those are the dimensions. So these pieces right here are two by fours and this piece down here is just a piece of plywood. My piece of plywood was just uh, a piece that I found on the street that somebody threw away. So I'm going to make this frame first uh, in the garage. I'm going to cut a couple pieces of uh, 2 by 4 to these lengths and make this frame. And then we continue. So let's go to the garage. All right, I cut the pieces of wood. So uh, I'm gonna give you the dimensions. So if one of you will timestamp this on a comment below, I'll pin that comment. So for a seven foot uh, Grim Reaper, the shoulders are supposed to be one foot nine, but I cut this one foot eight. That way you have, so it's not just square where the fabric comes. Instead, you can round it up with a little bit of foam or something. I'll show you how, because we're going to use some wire for that. So the shoulders, one foot nine, but cut it one foot eight and the height to those shoulders is five foot eight. So two pieces of two by four that are five foot eight and one that is one foot eight. Now I marked here, doesn't matter how far apart you put these two pieces. Let me show you. Doesn't matter how far apart, but I'm going to do a foot. So I've marked here and here where I want them. So I'm going to screw that one there and that one there, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. And I'm using some two and a half inch decking screws that I had left over from where a fence was built here. There you go, that is solid. Now, why did I do the top first? Because this will make it easier when I stand it up on this end and put the piece of plywood on the top. It'll make it easier to drill down into those legs. So let's go back out and I'll show you how I do the bottom. All right, so one thing that I did, I drilled a hole in that two by four, and then I attached a piece of PVC, right? And then one uh, cosmetology head, and the reason I did that was to get the height of the head right, which is one foot, two inches. So write that down, hard to do with one hand, but 14 inches right there. That's the right height for that head. So I'm not going to leave this head here. I'm going to remove it uh, when we're done, but I'm going to use this to shape the chicken wire or chicken fencing, whatever you call it, around and give it the shape of the shoulders. I'm also going to probably pad the shoulders a little bit with a pool noodle. So let's do that next. Shoulders.
Now, based on my sketch and humanproportions.com, the arm is from the shoulder to the elbow is one foot seven inches, and then from the elbow to the tip of the hand is one foot eight inches, which if you add the two, that's three feet two inches. So I'm going to make those arms out of uh, scrap wood. It's like a one by two. And I'm going to cut separately from the shoulder to the elbow and from the elbow to the hand to give it an angle, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to do two arms, but one of them is going to hang straight down and the other one is going to hold the lantern. Okay, the other arm can be used later. Or if you wanted to have two hands, maybe you can have a staff for a wizard and a lantern or something else. But for now, I'm just going to have the lantern and the other hand down the side. I'm going to attach those to the frame using these spacers. So these spacers came with one of those TV, like this TV right here. Like all those TV mounting kits to the wall. Usually they come with spacers so that the screws can go through there and you space the TV out. Uh, but you can very easily take some uh, wood like a you know, like the stick from a broom, cut it into sections and then drill a hole through it. And this is just to bring the arm out a little bit closer to the shoulder, which I will show you. So let's go back to the garage and let's do that. Now, quick correction. That's why they say measure twice, cut once. So the arm wasn't one foot seven and then uh, one foot eight. It's one foot five from the shoulder to the elbow and one foot seven inches from the elbow to the hand. So that's why it is uh, three feet and two inches. Let's cut. For the lantern that the Reaper is going to use, I have taken this. I found this vintage lamp at a garage sale, but you can use a brand new one. They sell them. There's a link below if you want. And converted it with one of these solar, actually pretty cheap, uh, like landscape things that I used last year for my display, which are really cool because they are solar and they do have that flame effect. So it looks like fire. So I took that solar and converted it to that which is connected to electric now if you're interested in seeing how i converted that because that's a video unto itself let me know in the comments below and i'll do a separate video and what i did is i took the mechanism inside and moved it into the lamp that will plug to the wall which will be on a photo cell which means that it'll turn on by itself at night turns off during the day has a flame effect i don't have to worry about batteries or the sun being there so let me know in the comments below. Now let's continue with the tutorial. So I've positioned the arm in the shape to hold the lantern, right? And as you can see, I use two screws to hold it and then another one here. However, if the lamp or whatever it's holding is too heavy and that's too flimsy, you can add a little brace right here. So we can put a screw through here and a screw through here, and this will hold a ton of weight. Over here, right here, I put two screws. That way it keeps it from twisting and this is solid. Now I'm going to put an eye hook right here, like this, see it? It's going to go right here so that the lamp hangs right there. On the other side, I'm putting an arm, but it's not going to have a position right now. I might adjust it in the future, but for now it's just going to hang straight down. And it's just going to be screwed with one screw right here and one at the elbow. Let's do that. So I've attached both arms, the hook for the lantern, the brace, and the other arm. So now we're going to make the cowl or the hood with chicken wire. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is about four feet long to drape over it and give it the shape that we want. I'm going to take this chicken wire I'm going to form it around so it looks like a hood and the other thing I'm going to do is this leading edge 
going to fold it onto itself to make like a really strong edge where the hood is going to come over the face. So right now I'm taking this, which is very malleable as you can see, and giving it the shape of shoulders. The hood here comes down, right? And then I've been stapling it in different parts and then I'm pulling the staples as I get the shape that I want. So this shoulder is looking pretty good. So the fabric's going to flow over it. And then I'm gonna fix this one so it looks like the arm is coming out. I gotta fix that shoulder right there, but I'm just going to continue giving it the shape and realize that all this empty space can be scrunched to make the area get smaller. So here, you can go like that, making that area narrower, right? And then you can pull if you need to make it wider so you can give it a perfect 3D shape that you want. Another thing that I'm doing, so it's so bright. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm test fitting with this uh, blanket right here, just to see how it would flow. So I'm looking at the shoulder shape and the arm shape to make sure it looks pretty cool like a hood. Looks like we might need to narrow this a little bit. This looks okay. I gotta fix the arm for sure. But then once I get the shape that I like, we cover it with fabric. That's looking great. So I'm going to tack the wire with staples and zip ties just so that the cowl stays. Right now it's held temporarily with a couple staples. I'm going to put a staple, put a zip tie through it, and wrap it around the mesh to, you know, to keep it in place. And then we start wiring all the inside, which means the lantern, and then uh, if we're going to have any fog coming out, then we're going to put a pipe, you know, uh, or, or anything else. If you're going to do eyes uh, that glow, then you want to do that wiring now before we start putting the fabric on top. So, Let's get to it. I've been looking at what kind of fabric to use to cover the Reaper. Uh, if you have some old sheets, that will work. But if you have to buy new fabric, that's expensive, right? So I found out this. That's landscape fabric, right? So this is like 50 feet or about 15 yards by about a yard. Uh, and it's like 13 bucks. So you cannot beat on the per yard cost of this, right? So I'm going to drape this over. This thing is waterproof, uh, not waterproof, sorry. It's weatherproof, meaning this is not going to degrade out in the, in the sun, but we're gonna cover it anyway with something. So I'm going to start draping this over the form to give it that shape. Now, oh, part of this technique, I think I saw it in a different YouTube channel. I think it might've been Alan Hobbs' channel, uh, where we're going to make a poncho out of this. So we're going to cut it to length with a slit where the head goes, right? And we're going to do a series of ponchos that will be laid this way and then across as well to make the sleeves. Oh, I fastened a piece of PVC with some uh, zip ties and uh, it's ready as you saw in the video. Now I've cut this with the height from here to the ground with a little extra and now I cut a little slit to make that poncho. So let's uh, start putting this over that. Wow, somebody's racing.
That looks good. I'm going to do another one just like this, but we're going to put it this way. Now to bulk up the forearms so they don't look square, I am taking this noodle, cutting half, putting one half here, just cutting a slit, and the same on the other forearm, just so that it, uh, when it hangs, it hangs kind of like round, like our forearms. Now, uh, there is no rhyme or reason for how I'm draping this. I'm just going all around, trying to give it the shape that I want. So I have three pieces, one on the front, like a poncho, one down the side, under the arms, and then a third piece right here that goes from one arm all the way up, all the way down, and that will make the hood. So for the next step, since this is all wired, I'm going to remove I'm going to remove her face so that we have that hollow entity that doesn't exist. Now I've laid out the landscape fabric the best way that I can as you can see and now I'm test fitting some of these creepy cloth because I didn't like this look it just looked too fake but this gives it the weight and the ragginess that I want so I'm going to test fit this and I'm going to add some more pieces and then then we'll see what happens it's all green maybe I'll do it green and spray paint it black well, let's try it anyway. I'm going to sew two of these together and make a poncho that goes over Mr. Reaper. I added the black creepy cloth, it looks much better. Now, I might have to use that on the green stuff. Check it out. I think that should work, huh? It'll take forever though. I might get the spray gun out and put it on the compressor. Besides, it'll add a protective cover of like latex paint, so maybe we should do that. Let's do a test run. Lamps on, fog's coming out. What do you all think? I think it's fantastic. All right, we gotta paint it black. And uh, another option we can do is put two LED lights in the eyes that glow through the fog. That might be cool. If I have time, I'll do that. I'll show it to you as a different variant. For now, I think we just need to spray this so that we get a nice coat of uh, paint, uh, acts as a glue for all this fabric and it will help protect it from the weather. The landscape fabric is weatherproof pretty much, but this stuff, it's like the cheapest cotton ever. I don't know what kind of fiber it is, but that will break down in no time. So we're gonna have to spray it. Okay, before I start painting the Reaper, you know, with the paint on the outside, I'm going to use just a regular exterior black latex. And that is, like I said, to encapsulate that uh, the cotton inside of the, of the creepy cloth and to give it a little bit more of a weather uh, 
resistance. Also the creepy cloth was green which I don't like. I want it to be black so that's why we're painting it. Now you could use uh, you know paintbrush like a you know airbrush like this one but it'll take until like next Halloween to get the whole thing painted. This is good for like little things like a mask. I also bought this one right here. That was just 13 bucks but you do need a compressor and also it's not a huge volume. This will be good for like a tombstone. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and got this guy. All right, so that plugs on the wall uh, and it's designed to paint walls and fences and, and uh, doors. So this should uh, fit the need. Now, I'm not gonna recommend this yet because I haven't even opened it, uh, but if it works out, I'll add the link below. This is just a... Uh, Powered paint sprayer, you plug it in the wall, fill that up, one liter of uh, latex paint, and we're going to go and cover that uh, the Reaper with it. So let's go back out to the garage and let's do that. Now, using that paint sprayer is really easy. You just fill up the tank, you pop it in, and you spray. But the trick is to make sure you have the right kind of paint. And basically, it's not that kind of paint, but more the viscosity of that paint or how freely it flows. So they include this little cup and what you do is you fill it up with the paint that you want to use and then you time how long it takes for it to be from full to empty and then you have a little booklet that says if it takes between 20 and 40 seconds you're good to go if it takes any longer it means it's too thick and you need to thin your paint so i'm going to test the paint and we can start spraying this thing that's all set up the coverage is a beast <laughs> Right, so far this thing is amazing. I covered the whole Reaper in less than two minutes and that's literal. It took me like five because I kept stopping to move the camera but in two minutes the whole thing is soaked. It used up all the paint so I'm going to load a little bit more and that's to spray the inside of the hood so we can get the nice dark color and the thick latex on it. This guy is pretty much done. The creepy cloth is nice and crusty. It could use another coat, which I will do tomorrow. What I need to do now is put the lantern here, uh, get all the lights all set up, the fog machine, and I can show you what it looks like in its full glory at night. But let's do a quick 360 of it. And I'll do a better one when it's all set up with the lantern and everything. Let's test it out. And that's how you make a reaper. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, because that's what we do in this channel. Again, I'm Eduardo Talbert. This is Monster Tutorials. I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to support this channel, we have a merch store with all the shirts that you saw me wear during the build. There's a Patreon. There's all kinds of stuff. So, or just watch. Watch the videos. They're cool. I'll see you on the next one. Happy Halloween.